Here we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Yoga for Yogis. Today is Thursday, December 31st, and it's the last day of the year. Very auspicious for us to be practicing yoga together. Louise is our instructor this morning. She's one of our local treasures from Crestwood in Yonkers, and we're so happy she's here to lead us in this uh, gentle yoga class. It is uh, with great um, gratitude that I thank each and every one of you who's on the call, who's part of our wellness community. I want to thank all of our instructors, including Louise, for guiding us throughout 2020 and making our uh, time together really special. I want to thank the Yonkers Public Library for paying for the Zoom platform, which enables us to get all together. I want to thank Friends of Crestwood Library who provide innumerable support and re reference and referrals. And I also want to thank Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, who has given us a contract for wellness funding and it pays for this program as well as many others. And the best news is, is that we get three more months of wellness contract from the county so we will be able to continue our classes and we're going to try in the new year to have some night classes we'll be talking to louise and to shannon about that so without further ado i'm going to turn the class over to our lovely louise thank you thank you z so as i said before um, i suggest that you start your practice lying on your mat if you have any strong aversion to that then you don't have to but the nice thing about lying down on the firmness of the mat is it gives us a few moments to invite a sense of mindful, mindful connection to our body. So if you are choosing to lie down, I'm probably going to remain seated just because if I do a lot of lying down or mat stuff, sometimes that affects the mic and my ear. But um, <clears throat> there's no specific thing you need to see me doing other than lying down. So when you lie down, if you need a little support under your head, don't hesitate to raise your head up a little higher. Ideally, when we're lying on the back, um, we would like not to have our chin jutting up to the ceiling, but if your, our upper backs are all rounded to some degree, our upper back is supposed to be rounded, but if over time, if it gets very, very, if that roundedness gets a, a bigger, it will not allow us to lie with our head in neutral. So just make sure you're comfortable in terms of what's going in on your particular body but if you're comfortable and you notice that your chin is like that, even if it's not your habit to put a pillow under your head, you might wanna do that. So your neck is more in a neutral position. You can lie with your legs straight out. You can lie with your knees bent. If you bend your knees and place your feet on your mat, you may want to take your knees in and rest your inner knees against each other, which is a very nice relaxing position for the legs. So make sure you're comfy. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, close your eyes. And take a few moments to pause. Notice the sounds you have around you. When we're practicing yoga from as we've graduated this year to the at home setting, it can be challenging depending on the noise level in your house and your neighborhood. So without getting attached to any one sound, just notice what sounds are coming into your attention. And if you find one sound that's particularly pleasing, hover your attention to that sound. Now, of course, today, uh, most of us, depending on how many windows you have in your room, are gonna have the sound effect of raindrops, which can be quite pleasant. So if you hear that, and if that sound is indeed a pleasant one for you, you could let your mind just kind of rest on those falling raindrops. And as you focus on one pleasing sound, if there were sounds that weren't so pleasing, they might fade into the background, even though they are still there, they're not going away, but you're becoming more pointed in your focus. And that's a part, a big part of what we do in yoga. We be, be, learn to become more mindful, 
and direct our focus to one specific point. If you need to change the position of your body, feel free to do so. You don't have to lie super still. But while you're lying here, I'm just gonna invite you to notice a few things that might be useful to you. Notice if there's anything body-wise that jumps out at you, an ache or stiffness, just notice that. Notice as you're lying on your back, if you feel pretty even. So bring your awareness to your back and think about the right side of your back versus the left side of your back. Does one feel heavier? Notice that. Notice if you're on the back of your head or if you habitually have your head turned a little bit to one side. Sometimes we sleep with the head turned and that creates stiffness later on. So just notice if your head is even from right to left. Invite your breath to be soft, smooth, and even. Notice your inhale and your exhale and move your awareness more from the point of noticing bodily sensations and bring your awareness to breath sensations. What is the passageway of your breath like today? Think of your breath as a little stream and I'm kind of lucky, except on heavy rain days, I do have a creek not on my property, but in the back of my yard. Not so lucky because on rainy days it, it can flood. But so we have this little creek in the back of our yard, which I enjoy watching when I can. And just a little creek has a fair amount of movement. So your breath might be very smooth, a very clear creek, a clear body of water, but maybe there's a tree branch that fell into the creek and thus there's some blockage in the passageway of your breath. You may have blockages in the nose, in the throat, or in any other structures involved in your breathing. So just notice that. Notice what you're working with without judgment. We, in yoga, we, our intention is to breathe in and out through the nose. There are some breathing practices that are different, but you might need to breathe through your mouth if you have a, if a branch fell, in a sense, in your nasal passages, a lot of us have a little stuffy nose this time of year. You may need to use your mouth every now and then if you feel you need to. Notice your inhale and your exhale and how they relate to each other. Is one a lot longer? Does one either inhale or exhale seem smoother? Is the pathway of your breath bumpy or smooth? And know that whether, no matter what's going on with the pathway of your breath, it is your breath and it is delicious. Stay present with your breath for another few moments. Notice if the inhale and the exhale are about the same in length or if one is a lot longer than the other. There's no wrong or right, really. As long as you're breathing, you're good. But sometimes we cheat ourselves on the exhale and our inhales are pretty long or okay. And then the exhale's really short. So if you notice that your inhale, like you inhale, let's say for five or six or four, and the exhale is like a two, see if you can find a way maybe to lengthen your exhale out a little bit. Try and squeak out a little more length on that exhale if that feels reasonable for you. In a moment, we're gonna start moving. One of the students who was here early mentioned low back, another student mentioned neck. So I'll keep those things in mind, but one nice thing to do for our low back, for our whole body really, and also to help dial our awareness into the core and, the, and how the core supports us is pelvic tilt and tucks, which I'm, I'm sure you've done often. So you could start with that whenever you're ready. I'm gonna guide you through it and I will do a few. Um, hopefully you won't need to see me so you don't have to change your position, but I'll do a few with you and then I'll come back to sitting. So for our pelvic tilt and tucks, first of all, if you had water nearby, which is good, it's good to have water nearby, make sure it's not in your way. 
you keep any padding that you have under your head, you can keep that. Now bend your knees if the legs are straight and set your feet a few inches apart. Might be kind of hard to see them, but you'll know if they're touching. So see if you can have your knee, your ankles and your knees in one line and a good few inches between your inner edges of your feet. Let your arms be comfortable, palms up or down. If you turn the palms up and rotate your arms externally, that's what we're doing. If the palms are down and then we start lifting the arms and rolling them so the back of the hand is down, we have externally rotated the arms, that makes a different connection in the upper back and how it meets the floor. So you might like that. And before, actually before, if you start the pelvic tilt and tucks, that's fine. But before we do that, or if you started, just pause for a moment and turn your head just a smidgen to your right. So not the biggest turn. And just notice with this little smidgen of a neck turn, how your head feels, how your neck feels. Stay there, be soft for a moment. And then turn your head back to center and pause there. Feel the back of your skull heavy to the mat. Soften your gaze, soften your eyebrows. You can have your eyes partway closed as we do these movements. And then take a, like a quarter turn of your head to the left and pause there and notice how that feels. Did the shoulders change when you turned your head to that side? Did one side turn with more ease than the other? It would be nice if we could improve that in our practice. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. When you're ready, roll your head back to center. Make sure your arms are comfortable. Inhale in place, and as you exhale, sink your low back down toward the mat. Keep a light touch to your feet. You don't have to do a lot of muscular energy here. You're just kind of suction, suction cupping the low back to the mat. And as you inhale, that'll release. The low back pulls right up into the body and your low back curve comes right back in. So as you exhale, you draw your low back to the mat. That's the tuck part of the tilt and tuck. And as you inhale, you take the breath in and you release the suction cup activity. Low back lifts up into the body. So when you exhale and draw your belly in, when you're in the tuck position, you'll feel like your pubic bone and your belly button are coming a little toward each other. And you might feel a little condensing in the low pelvic belly, which is that's the core working. And as you inhale you, and we are come to our tilt, you might feel the pubic bone area draws away from the belly button. Try to keep your feet relaxed. I just noticed my toes were curling. So try and keep your feet flat to the mat. Try not to push into your feet, but if you like, you could add a little more zest to the core activity, not by a rigid sucking in of the belly, but since we are in winter and we had some snow, Think about snow, it's loose, it's all over the place, right? When you bring the snow together and make a snowball, it's still snow, but we've compacted it. And that's what we're doing here on the exhale. When you exhale and do your tuck, draw your low back curve down, the snow, in a sense, comes into a ball in the center of your low belly area. And it's the low belly, the sides of the belly, the belly button, that all gets kind of compacted. And then we inhale, the ball of the snowball gets a little loose. And it's a nice snowball. It's not one we're throwing at anybody. So it's a nice, peaceful snowball. And you could do that a few times. Notice if your shoulders become rigid at any time. I tend to have tight shoulders. And sometimes as I'm doing this, my shoulders want to get involved. So you may have other parts of the body that are rigid and tend to tense up. So just try to keep your body soft. If you feel that your shoulders and or neck are tensing, make your movement smaller. So it's a small movement regardless. We're not moving a lot in space. Nice and easeful. The next time you come to the tuck and your low back curve is drawing downward, pause there, but don't suspend your breath. Keep your breath flowing, relax your toes, Relax your fingers, backs of the shoulders heavy, keep breathing. And then when you're ready on an inhale, just release the low back and just breathe naturally. And you might notice now, possibly, maybe, that your back feels a little different. Your low back curve might have been left a little less curvy. It might not be quite so pulled away from the mat. 
you might notice that you, you might have experienced some stretching in that pose because when we're in the tuck position, we're broadening the low back. So that might have felt good if you have low back sensitivity. So just notice how you feel. And in a moment, we're going to come to sitting. So when you're ready, I might come up a little faster so I can observe everyone a little bit. But when you're ready, roll over to either side, whichever side you're more, more comfortable on, and stay there. Stay on your side. If I stay there, my earphone will come out. So stay on your most comfortable side, bend your knees, get nice and cozy, and just notice how you feel. And then when you're ready, come up to sitting. Now, if you're sitting on your mat, you may want padding. Most people are more comfortable with padding. And it's not really because our tushy isn't comfortable. It's because when we're sitting, a lot of times, our, the, the curved part of the low back, which is our tilted position, is normal. But a lot of times when we're sitting, we lose the curve and we get a little rounded. So I'm try trying to show you here that I'm, well, here I'm really pitching for it. I know none of you would be that. But now I've lost my curve. So I wanna have that curve in my low back. And for many of us, not me so much, because I, I do have a lot of natural uh, tushy padding, but sitting on a folded blanket can help your back be in a normal, your normal, low back curve situation so you're not um, slouching. So if you're sitting in a chair, usually the chair gives enough support. I think that was Ginger who asked about that. You probably won't need to sit on a blanket on the chair, but you might want to, especially if you're sitting on a cold chair. We're gonna do a few movements. I'm sitting cross-legged, you don't have to. This is not comfortable for everyone. So you can sit with your legs in any position you like. You could touch the soles of your feet together. You can have one leg drawn into you and one leg out. And if you're sitting in the chair, I just suggest that you, un well, not suggest, I ask that you don't cross your legs, but you probably know that for yoga anyway, have your feet parallel. So just come to a comfortable seat. That's a lot of words to describe a comfortable seat. See if you can get a sense that you have sitting bones. There's a bony connection in the back of your pelvis to the mat and see if you could get a sense that you're sitting evenly from right to left. So a lot of us will list to one side without realizing it. Back of the neck should feel long and take that small little uh, tiny turn of your head to the right again, like we did on the mat and just notice how that feels. Notice when you turn your head to the right, if the left shoulder wants to come along from the right, that's just a sign of tightness in that line where they're a little overly attached to each other. Bring your head back to center and pause and to take a small turn, just a little turn of your head to the left. Notice how that feels in your neck. Notice how it feels anywhere else. Bring your head back to center, pause. And also as we sit at any time where you need to change the, the position. So let's say we're sitting cross-legged for a while and that's becoming really uncomfortable. Change the leg position um, at all times because I'd like to do something with you that feels, I think, um, and hopefully you will feel it's nice on the shoulders, but we, um, we are sitting for a while. So when you're ready, join your hands together, palms together, and bring your thumb tips or the outer edges of your thumbs to your chest. So you're lifting your chest, you're lifting your heart center in a sense to your hands. Shoulder blades might feel like they're coming toward each other a little bit. See if your head can be neutral, not forward, back, or tipping to one side. And just pause here, close your eyes if you like, notice your breath. And then as you inhale, lock your thumbs together so you make a butterfly shape. Scoop your arms forward, bring your arms about halfway up. Pause, and as you bring your arms up overhead, just make sure you're not irritating any of your shoulders. If you've had shoulder surgery, your doctor might have told you don't lift that arm up. So take the arms up as high as they go comfortably and then join the palms together. Notice if the fingers touch each other evenly or if you need to shift a little bit for each finger to find its mate on the other hand. Bend your elbows and maybe if the hands were above you, maybe you can rest the heel of your wrist on your hand. If your arms weren't up that high, your hands might be by your forehead. Turn your head to the right again. And this time, tip your chin down just a smidgen, just a teeny little bit and drop your eyes down. Bring your head back to center, eye center, head center, and then take a small turn of the head to the left. If it feels okay, drop the chin down just a smidgen, drop your gaze down. 
Gaze normal, chin parallel to the floor, head back to center. Reach the arms away from your head or your forehead. Good, and then lower your prayer pose and bring your prayer back to your heart center, good. Now bring your hands down to your lap. Reach your right arm to the left, but not so much that you're turning the body. Just reach the right arm over there as if there was something there you wanted to grab and bring that down and reach the left arm over there and see if there's something you wanna grab. And then bring both arms out in front of you about parallel about shoulder height. This is kind of one thing about this series of movement we're gonna do. It can be a little annoying because it has a lot of steps, but hopefully it will be worth it. And just as a, a note, one, um, you can rest your arms for a moment. If you're sitting cross-legged and cross-legged is comfortable for you, every now and then just change which leg is on front. So we don't wanna be sitting in the same way the whole time. So take your arms out in front of you about parallel. Now take your right arm and reach your right hand over to the left palm. It might not touch. If it doesn't touch, bring your right your right hand your um, right hand a little closer. I'm sorry. I told you to bring your right hand to your left. I was doing the wrong side. So bring your right hand toward your left. And if the right hand does not reach the left without irritation in the shoulder, bring the left hand more to the midline. So the hands are touching. Now wherever your right hand touched the left, slide the hand forward. So now the right hand is reaching a little further along the left hand. Take the right arm back to the star position, bend your elbow, bring the back of your right hand to your forehead, keep the left arm reaching forward and take a small turn, not so much of the head, but of your collarbones to the right and the head is gonna come along with you. Good. Then turn back forward, release your right arm again, bring it toward the left hand, slide the right arm. Let me show how, you, show how that looks from the side. So you bring the hand here and you can see my right fingertips are like by my um, top of my hand. And from my shoulder blade, I'm drawing the shoulders, the fingers a little more toward the other fingers as you can see, or well, maybe you can see, but they're not quite touching. And then you separate the hands, but whoop, you fall off your prop, that was classy. Bend your elbow, take your hand to your forehead and open up, we're still on the same side. Turn the collarbones forward. Release your right hand, bring it down to your left hand, over to your left hand, slide the right hand along your left hand, bend elbow, back of the hand to the forehead and turn open. Again, collarbone spinning, We're, you are twisting a little bit. Good, come back to center. Now this time, keep your hand glued to your forehead. Keep your right hand glued to your forehead. Your left arm might wanna come down to rest for a moment. And we're gonna do a few just like this. As you inhale, spin your collarbones, and maybe now you can feel you can spin the top of your breastbone to the right, but don't force it. Make sure you're, as you turn to the right, your left sitting bone is down. Come forward again. We're going to do two more like that. Inhale and spin open to your right. Little twist. Don't push it. Make sure your sitting bones are even. And then come forward once more. Pause here. And then inhale and open one more time. Good. Now, keep your uh, fingers on your forehead, but slowly turn your head forward. Good. Now, take your right hand to your shoulder and make some small circles. I might not make them so small because I want you to see it. So, small circles in one direction. If it bothers you, make them even smaller. And then pause and go in the other direction. These nice little small circles. Good. And then pause, release your hand, take your hands to your thighs. We still have another side to do. But before we do that, if you haven't changed your leg position yet, stretch your legs out and uh, Ginger or anyone else sitting in a chair, you could stretch your legs out, roll your wrists around. You, um, excuse me, those aren't wrists, those are ankles. Roll your ankles around, roll your wrists around, do some interpretive stuff if you like. Roll your shoulders a little bit. And let's come back to the start position. Comfortable seat, legs in any position. You don't have to have them cross-legged at all. Lift your hands up roughly parallel. So the palms are looking at each other. So this time you're going to be doing your left arm. Now, when you take your left arm over to the right, if there's any pulling and the hand doesn't touch, bring your right, bring your other hand over to meet it. So don't strain with the arm, the side we're working on. So we're bringing our hand over. When we do that, we might feel a little stretch in the shoulder blades. So Satish, this is um, something I did this morning, which helped me a lot. So that's one of the reasons I'm asking you to do it. And then when you're ready, bend your left elbow, bring the back of your hand to your forehead and turn out to your second side to your left. Inhale here. And as you exhale, pull your belly in, come forward, extend your arm, 
reach the arm over to the arm, slide the left arm past the right a little bit, slide it along to get a stretch, then bend the elbow. I call it sometimes the woe is me position, back of the hand to the forehead. Take a little kind of turning of the collarbones. The head goes along for the ride. Good. Come back to the start position. One more time, release the arm. Take it to the arm that's waiting. Draw the, draw the waiting arm closer if it needs to. Slide the arm. Bend the elbow, hand to the forehead, open up. Now here, take your right arm, bring it down, let it rest a little bit. It's probably gonna be happy about that. Inhale a breath here. And as you exhale, turn the head forward, turn the shoulders forward. Good. And inhale, take a small twist of the collarbones and maybe the top of the breastbone now. Good. And come back to the start position forward. And then open up one more time, spinning over to your left. Good. Now from here, turn your head forward and it might be nice as you turn the head and it slides along the back of your fingertips. Now take your left hand, bring the fingertips to the left shoulder and do some small circles or big circles. This is the side I woke up with it hurting. So I'm gonna go really gentle here. Some really small circles on that side and then change the direction of your circles. Oh, it feels so good. And then pause there <laughs> and then bring the arm forward. Take the right arm that's been waiting there and bring that forward, hands together, palms to the heart center, bow your head. Take a small little yes, small little yes nod. Take a small little no, yeah, yeah, no <laughs> nod, I can't say no nod. That's good. Bring your hands down to your legs, stretch your legs out, slap around one of your thighs. Might feel nice to wake it up because the legs weren't working so much, so they will shortly and then tap out the other thigh, smack that around. We're gonna make our way to standing. Now to come to standing, um, obviously if you're in a chair, you're just gonna come to standing. If you're sitting, there's a few ways you can come. You can do what I'm gonna do, which is I'm gonna come to hands and knees, but you don't have to do it this way. Actually, you don't even have to come to hands and knees. You can come to what's called sometimes standing on your knees. And then you can take one foot forward. If you have a bad knee, bring the bad knee forward and then tuck the toes of the back leg, press your hands into your front thigh and come up to standing like so. I will need to adjust my screen a moment. I've done quite a bit of zooming and that's one thing I still have to do. And I am just gonna futz with that. So make your way to standing. And as you do that, as you make your way to standing, uh, check in with your feet again. Apologize for the adjustment there. See that you're standing pretty evenly on your feet. So remember when we were on our back, we were thinking about how does my back meet the mat? So now how do your feet meet the mat? So get your feet roughly parallel. I'm gonna adjust the screen again to be, uh, so my head isn't quite so cut off, but that's okay. I could be the headless yoga instructor. Let your arms drape by your sides. Close your eyes and just like you did when you were on your back, stay present in your form, stay present in your physical form. Notice if you feel, even though you know you're standing on two legs, right? Notice if you have more weight in your right leg or more weight in your left leg. So notice if you feel lopsided, you might not be, but you might be. Notice if your head and if you could see yourself in the reflection, Notice sometimes with Zoom, one nice thing about it, I can't seem to get this right today. With Zoom, we uh, notice things about ourselves like, oh, my head is always uh, kind of toward the right there. So notice that. Let your arms relax. Good. When you're ready, bend your elbows, hands to your heart center, inhale a breath here. And as you exhale, release your arms down by your side. As you inhale, bring your arms halfway up. And then if it feels okay, stay uh, looking forward. If it feels okay, bring your arms all the way up or as high as you can go. And the right arm might lift up more than the left arm. So bring your arms up, join your hands together overhead, slide the hands down, hands to the heart center, take a full breath in and a full breath out. Good. Inhale a breath here, exhale, release your arms. Inhale, take your arms up again. As you exhale this time, sweep your arms wide, connect your hands to your hips, feel your feet underneath you and bow forward into a forward bend. You can bend your knees a little bit if you need to. I have a very, it looks like I'm wearing an apron. It's just the way the top fits. 
So keep the belly working in and up. And as you bow forward, keep your spine long. So make sure you're not curled in like this, like bringing the collarbones toward the pubic bone, lengthen the collarbones away from the pubic bone. Now, as we do this, as our spine comes forward, what's happening, all the weight of the body is coming forward. So you might feel that there's more weight now on the toes or on the, on the mounds of the toes. So find the back of your heels, find the back of your heels. You could keep your hands on your hips or you could take the palms to the front of your thighs. Make sure the back of the neck is long, sides of the neck are long. Take a small turn of your head to the right here, just a tiny little turn, tiny little turn. Bring your head back to neutral, nose looking down. Take your head over to the other side, tiny little turn. Bring your head back to center. And as you inhale, as you come up, you can glide your arms up your legs or you can reverse your swan dive and come up to standing like that. Come back to mountain pose. I don't think I mentioned when we were standing, we are in mountain pose to dasana. And mountain pose is very important because we bring the stability of our mountain into every pose that we do that is standing up. So now from here, let's come to a nice familiar pose that starts to get into a little bit more strength, strength, there. strength building. Take your feet a comfortable width apart. And by the way, um, some of you were using the chair to sit. If you have any kind of uh, balance issue or any injury, you could do this pose with a chair right in front of you. So the chair is there for you to hold on to, especially when we do a balance pose that could be very useful. So we want the outer edges of our feet roughly parallel and the, the legs comfortably wide. Now, bring your awareness to your right leg. I'm sure you've done warrior two a million times, so I'm sorry if I'm giving you more, more detail than you like. And from the inner upper thigh, spin that right leg out. You're not trying to spin it as far as you can because if you have a lot of flexibility in your hips, you could actually kind of turn it too far, which isn't ideal. So you are, Say your second toe might be looking to the wall on the right. That's a lot of turnout, but you might have your third toe. Your leg might be a little in like this. So just know that there's a difference here from person to person, and we're not trying to be the same yogi. We are all individual yogis. Now, your other legs, that's your right leg. So now your left leg, turn that in a little bit. See if you can keep your heart looking forward, your gaze looking forward and all the way down to the belly button looking forward. Now the hips are gonna be a little tipped over to your right because of the asymmetrical leg position. Draw your hands to your heart center. As you inhale, feel the gentle lift of your chest. And as you exhale, bend your right knee. It could be a teeny bend, little itty bitty bend, or it could be a bigger bend. Do what's most comfortable for you. Make sure the knee doesn't jut past your ankle. Excuse me, make sure the knee doesn't jut, like here's a jutting knee. It's like over my toenails and that's not really all that comfortable. And then if it feels okay, unfold your arms like wings and then turn your gaze over toward your right. So you're looking toward your bent leg side. Check in with your feet. Do you feel that both legs are working for you? Do you feel the outer and inner edge of your bent leg foot, the outer and inner edge of your straight leg foot? Maybe you need, want to bend your knee a little bit more than you did when you started. Maybe you want to bend it less. Maybe your arms are tired and you just want to bring them to your hips. Take two more breaths here if you can. Staying in the poses does help to build strength and stability in both muscles and bone. But always come out sooner before I do if you need to. When you're ready, turn the palms up. Find particularly that bent leg foot. Press into that foot, slowly straighten that leg, bring the arms overhead, slide the hands to the heart center, parallel your feet. Sometimes when we're in the pose, particularly if we have like an old mat and it has a little slip to it, the legs go a little wider. So for the second side, adjust your feet. Maybe you wanna go wider, maybe you wanna go narrower, either one is good. And then spin your left leg out. So we're going to the second side, turn your right leg in a little bit. Make sure you can feel outer edge and inner edge of both feet and that both legs are working, that the weight isn't just spilling over onto one leg. Hug the thigh, the thigh muscles to the bone so the kneecaps almost feel like they're pulling up toward the hips. Join your hands together at the heart center. Inhale, and as you exhale, bend your left knee. Now, your left knee might be a completely different bend from your right knee because it's coming from a different hip, <laughs> a different knee, et cetera. 
you can glance down to make sure your knee isn't passing your ankle. And then when you're ready, you can unfold your arms if that's comfortable. Good. And turn your gaze over to your left. Heart looks forward, gaze looks to the left. Feel the, the floor underneath your feet. And even though our feet are, you know, are working, see if you can imagine that you're relaxing the skin of your feet. Take two more breaths here or one more breath, whatever works for you. And then when you're ready, spin your arms, externally rotating them so they face the ceiling. And then think about lifting your hips more than straightening your knee. Think about pulling the bent leg thigh up and pressing the lower bent leg uh, from knee, knee down, down, hands together, hands to the heart, parallel your feet and toe heel your feet back to parallel. Notice how you feel. So hopefully now your legs feel a little zesty from that activity. Notice where your feet ended up. Do you habitually stand like this? That's very common. Most of us naturally are not gonna stand with our outer edges of our feet perfectly parallel. So you don't have to make that like something that you wanna do, but it's a good setup. It's a good way to start for our poses. So now we are, I am gonna introduce some balance, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So if you wanna have a chair near you to hold on to, or if you wanna move, to a wall, if you have a wall nearby or a piece of furniture that you feel you wanna be near for stability, do that. Um, even if you're moving out of the camera, because there's so many of you, it's hard to see anyone er anyway from here. And come back to Tadasana and find your breath. Then when you're ready, and again, you could hold on to something, lift your, just your right heel. So you're bending the knee and you're lifting your right heel up. And notice your body might wanna send the hip out on the other side, but we wanna suction cup that hip in. So even though we're standing asymmetrically, our hips are pretty even. Squeeze the butt cheeks a little bit toward the midline. And if you like, as you inhale, float your arms up and then pick up the toes and float the leg up just a little bit. So you're standing on one leg and you're lifting the other. As you exhale, arms down and right foot down. Do that again, lift the heel of your right foot Take the arms up and then lift the toes of your right foot, suction cup the left hip to the right, take the knee up. If it feels okay, turn your gaze to the right. That's gonna mess up your balance. Your left, you're gonna be like, hey, the body's like, what are you doing here? Turn your head to the left, excuse me, turn your head to the right, turn your head to the left, head back to center, foot down, arms down. And now just march in place, nice, easy movement. Stand, then again, lift your right heel. And this time lift your right toes and circle the ankle around. Mine's not circling very well today. Circle it the other way, bring it down. And all that, we still haven't done tree yet. And now for the, for the, <laughs> the final stop in that journey, bend the right knee, lifting the heel. Now spin the leg out. Now you can do your tree by connecting the heel to your standing leg, just like that. Or you can lift the foot up and connect the leg to the, to the inner leg, but don't go on the inner knee. And if you have um, a lot of stability and not slippery pants, you could theoretically bring your foot all the way up to the inner thigh. So whichever connection works for you, here, here, or with the heel up into the groin, find that connection, gently draw your straight leg into the bent leg foot, keep both sides of yourself long. You could take both hands to the heart or you could hold on to a wall or a chair with one or both hands. If it feels okay, you could take your arms up Take a few breaths here. Relax your shoulders. So even though there's, when our arms are lifted, there's gonna be some lift, of course, in the shoulder blades, but we also want them to be relaxed. Don't set your gaze at me because every time I wobble, I'll wo you'll wobble along with me. So set your gaze at something above the computer screen, something steady on the wall, like a picture or your window. And when you're ready, join your hands, hands to the heart, if you like, you can hover that leg for a moment and bring it forward, or maybe you couldn't wait to get it down, and I don't blame you. Shake your legs out a little bit. Good, good, good. Before we do the second side, I just wanna come a little closer so I can see everyone, see if anyone's shaking a fist at me 
or <laughs> if anyone has any questions, I don't know if I can unmute you for questions, but maybe I can. Um, every, so wave your hand wildly if you have a question, I guess, or type it in. I don't know how that works. Yeah, people can use the chat and uh, you're a co-host, Louise, so you can okay. unmute people. You can call on people to unmute if you want. Okay, okay. It doesn't look like I'm not seeing any questions. For some reason, when I do a Zoom now, it doesn't let me unmute people. It's very strange. People have to unmute themselves. So we're just gonna do the second side. So hopefully, um, and I'll try and keep my eyes on chat from here. Um, and Z, if you see a question, please let me know. Um, For because sure. it's hard to see I will. what's going on. <laughs> Thank you. So now we're gonna do that whole schmigiggy on the second side. Um, and we're going to start now. So now we did our right leg. Now we're going to do the left. So we're going to start small. We're just going to lift the heel and then lift the toes. And then notice if the hip pops out. I'm exaggerating, but that's what it wants to do because it's normal. So you want to squeeze your hips into the midline and place the foot down. And let's do that again. Lift the left heel, lift the left toes. I'm much less stable on this side than the other. You might notice you have a side that's more stable. Place the foot down. Now lift the heel. Good. Take the arms up and now take the toes and the ball of the foot up. So the legs a little lifted. You could take it higher if you want. Good. Lower the foot, lower the arms. Pause. Find Tadasana, both feet down. Toes relax. Let the feet kind of spread out. Let them kind of melt a little into the mat like a pad of butter. Um, or if you don't use butter, a, pa a pad of uh, a vegan butter. If you don't use butter, butter, whatever you use <laughs> that melts. And then again, lift the heel, lift the foot, lift the arms, lower the foot, lower the arms. Now for tree, lift the heel. Now we add the turnout, spin the left leg out like we did in warrior two. It's the same mechanism. Connect the heel either to the shin I'll just go through the, ple the places quickly um, with the toes on the floor or pick the foot completely up and kind of nestle it in toward the shin. Just make sure you're not pushing on the inner knee or you can bring the foot in toward your inner thigh. That never really works for me very well because it kind of just slides down. Choose what works for you. Find that connection. Find something to gaze at, your drishti, a place that can help you focus your gaze. You can keep your hands at your heart center at your waist or you could grow your branches. Know that our, our goal, maybe goal isn't the right word, but in tree, we're not trying to go for stillness, complete stillness, like really like yoga, there's no end place that's okay, I get the gold medal now, um, I'm in the end place. It's the journey. So all oh, this, this pose brings so much attention, focus, mindfulness. So there's a lot of working pieces here. And just like a regular tree, regular trees aren't still and rigid. We need the flexibility in both mind and body to know that our trees can tip a little bit and that's okay. Some days our trees will be very wavy and some days they won't be. When you're ready, bring your hands together, slide your hands down. If you still feel comfortable standing on the, the one leg, you can just kind of lift your left leg up for a moment into a marching leg. Oh, and put the foot down. The feet are probably gonna be very happy. Shake your legs out a little bit. Feel free to come off your mat and move around in your house. That's the nice thing about yoga. You can walk, <laughs> walk around. A nice thing about yoga on Zoom, you can walk around a little bit, shake it out, and then come back to Tadasana, come back to your mountain and notice how you feel. Close your eyes, sense your feet on the mat. Is the weight even? Do you feel one leg is longer? You might actually have one leg longer. Sometimes if I'm having a day where I feel very unbalanced, I feel like one leg, one leg is almost going through the floor. Do you feel more weight on one foot or the other? Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe there's not a reason and you can adjust it so the weight is more even. Um, let's take a, a down dog today and it's optional. You don't have to do it. So I'm gonna turn so I'm on the, so you wanna have the length of your mat working for you here. And stand in about the middle of your mat, arms by your side, feet parallel. As you inhale, slide your arms forward and up. As you exhale, forward fold. We did this in the beginning, hands to the hips, bow forward. 
Now notice if your chin is like this and the back of the head is folded, that will make your neck unhappy. So lengthen out the back of your neck because I'm looking at the screen a lot, you might not be able to see that. But, and if you can maybe fold a little bit more deeply, not by rounding the upper back, but by folding in those frontal hip creases. You can even slide some fingers into your frontal hip crease and use that as a guide. You can bend your knees. You don't have to have your legs straight. So here we are in this nice flat back position. Now to transfer to down dog, you slide your hands down. Of course, you can come to tabletop position and from tabletop set up down dog. If you're coming like this, you bend enough to get your palms down, plant your palms down, <laughs> remove your glasses if you need to, and walk your feet back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Good. And if down dog isn't in your practice, feel free to stay in mountain pose. Now, um, get a sense of where your heels are in space. Without sagging the hip, bend your right knee, but don't let the hip poke out. Bend the right knee just a little bit, keep the hip high and stretch the lower left leg from below the knee to the calf, stretch that down to the ankle and then switch. Bend your left knee, bring your right leg to straight or straight-ish, keep the left hip perky, don't let it sag. You wanna feel that the hips are even and slowly, even though the thigh of the right leg is we think, I'm sorry, I think we're doing the left leg now is pulling up. Think about the lower leg, the heel reaching down. And then release the other heel down. Take one more breath here. Inhale, and as you exhale, gently bring your knees down toward the mat. So we're gonna stretch out onto the belly to get a little back bending in. So Come to your belly. I will probably just demonstrate quickly and then I'll take you through it. If when you're lying on your belly, if you have sensitivity in the front of your hips, feel free to take a blanket or a towel and open it up so that when you're lying on your belly, you have something soft there. So I'm sure all of you have done Cobra, but just in case you haven't, and there's lots of uh, different ways to do this. And then I have to take my glasses off so I, otherwise they'll fall. So I'm going to suggest this arm position, not my, with your head up, forehead down, hands underneath your armpit. So if you want a visual reference, this is what it would be. Naturally, when I'm talking to you, I'm lifting my head up, but it's not really good to do that um, on your neck. So the forehead is down, your hands are under your armpits. If you have wrist issues, like, and there's a lot of different kinds of wrist problems you can have, bring your forearms down like so. So whichever way your arms are gonna be, set them up like that, and then bring your awareness to your legs. So I'm just again, I'm gonna talk to you because if I bend down, that affects the sound. Set your arms to where they're gonna be, either this, palms under the armpits, or forearms down, let the head go forehead down, but pay a little attention to your legs. So they might just be hanging out. So come to your right leg, firm the right butt cheek. Think about the leg being very active and the toenails clicking down. Now do the same with your left leg, firm the left butt cheek, stretch the leg long, kneecap should be pointing down, legs working. Now from here, as you inhale, press your toenails down, press your pubic bone down, Lift your chest just a smidgen, draw the heart forward and your head's gonna lift with the chest. Don't let the head leave the parade, so to speak. So you might not be lifted very high. Your cobra might be down here. Just make sure the legs are pulling back and the heart is drawing forward. If it feels okay, turn your head just a smidgen to your right and pause. Bring your head back to center. Turn your head a smidgen to the left and pause. And then with your head to the left, lower down. So you're gonna be on your right ear. I'm gonna be on my hands because I have a microphone <laughs> in my right ear. So you're on your right ear, your, fore, your head is down, relax your legs. Let them go soft and mushy. Mushy legs, right ear down. Keep your arms in the same place they're in, either palms under the armpits or forearms down, but let them be hanging out arms. So if your arms are under your 
hands are under your armpits, the elbows will be kind of coming out to the side. Good. Now start to make everything a little lively. So turn your forehead down, hug your arms in. Now liven up your legs. You can do it one at a time, like right leg livens up, butt cheek squeezes, left leg, butt cheek squeezes. And then when you're ready with the legs long, the kneecap should be pulling up toward the thighs in that direction. As you inhale, press down your toe tips, press down your pubic bone, hug your butt cheeks, lift up into Cobra again. Now, if it feels okay, make sure your neck isn't curving a lot. Make sure your neck is long. If it feels okay, lift your hands up. If that doesn't feel okay, keep them down. If you lifted your hands up and it feels okay, take one arm out to the out, stretch it out, and just be careful what furniture you might have around. I have a radiator on my left side here. If it feels okay, stretch both arms out. Again, neck should feel soft. Legs are working hard. Belly is pulling in and up. And then bring your right palm down underneath your armpit or the right forearm down if you're doing forearms. Left hand down underneath your armpit. Turn your head to, uh, I believe, your left this time and lower your left ear down and rest. Take your arms by your side with the palms up, palms up, down. Soften your legs, soften your butt, be a big pile of muscles. And then when you're ready, bend your knees. You can keep your head to the side or you can bring your forehead down and rest it on your hands. And you're just going to sway your feet back and forth. And as you sway your feet, you might notice your hips rock a little bit from side to side. So if that feels good, let that happen. If it doesn't feel so good, just make it a very small action just in the legs. Not so much taking the hips with you. Take a few more moments here. And then when you're ready, pause, let your legs drop down. And then we're gonna transition. We're gonna to come to sitting for a twist. So when you're ready to come up, you may wanna come up to tabletop position first. You don't have to. And then just come to sitting. Now, let's see. If you're doing this in the chair, it's going to be a little, a little different, but not a whole lot. So whether you, I'll sit sideways, that might be helpful. So wherever you're sitting, make sure your sitting bones are down. And if you need to, especially if you're on the mat, you might need to introduce the padding so that you make sure that your back isn't rounded. Here I'm just doing a very small rounding, but this is enough, more than enough, more than rounding than we want. Good. Now, if you're, um, I'll do the mat instructions first and then I'll try and tweak it a little bit for the chair. If you're sit doing a twist in the chair, your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor. That doesn't change for this twist. But if you're sitting down, you're gonna stretch your legs out. I mean, if you're on the mat, stretch your legs out, bend your right knee, bring your right heel close to your butt, and let, we'll do this twist with the leg on the inside. Flex your left ankle. So this is the star of the twist. If you're on the mat, if you're sitting, your legs are in neutral. Now from here, take your left arm and bring it to your right leg. Take your right arm, which is the same as your bent leg, Take that arm up. See if you can get a sense that you could feel both sitting bones underneath your butt, either on the chair or to the mat. As you inhale, lift and lengthen your spine. Think of the rib cages literally lifting up from the hips. And as you exhale, take a small turn to your right. Now, if you're in a chair, you can bring your right arm down to the chair. If you're in the, on, the, on the floor, your right arm is gonna come slightly behind you. Good. You're using the left arm against the right leg to support the twist more than to yank you into the twist. Each time you inhale, come back to the length of your spine, the beautiful length of your spine. And as you exhale without force and without leading with the head and the neck, spin your collarbones a little bit to your right. Take a few breaths here. Twists are more about opening the back generally than the front. So your upper back might feel nice and broad here. Make sure that back arm 
that both shoulders are relaxed. A lot of times the back arm shoulder can tense up a little bit. So I just noticed that mine was really tense. Take one more breath here. When you're ready, slowly unwind. If you're on the mat, straighten your right leg out. You may wanna paddle your legs a little bit. Second side, bend the left knee, draw the heel comfortably close to your butt. If you're doing this on the chair, both legs will stay even. And then you're bringing your right hand to your left knee or to the um, shin. By the way, I should mention this, if it, rather than taking the other arm up, you can keep that hand down right from the start because sometimes when we take that arm up, I mean, it's more work. So it may be too much work and in the sense that it may be not really appropriate for you. So you can start the pose like this with the left arm up or you can have it down right from the start. Inhale, lift and lengthen your spine. And as you exhale, not so much from the head. See if you could turn from the shoulder girdle and the upper collarbones. And then the head just kind of follows along with that. Inhale again, exhale, maybe spin a little bit more. Maybe you needed to put your left arm down already, that's fine. When you're ready, drop the left arm out, down behind you like an anchor. Make sure you're not leaning back like this. One thing, one very good thing about the chair is it, it doesn't let you do that. But when you're sitting, we wanna keep our shoulders pretty much in line with our hips. And if you have short arms, you might wanna have a black um, something back there so your palm can be down. I have very short arms, so my, my hand doesn't reach the mat. Don't let the bent leg drop out, keep it toward the midline. Keep uh, the right leg active so it's not hanging out. The ankle's gently flexed and the leg is working and the knee is pointing up. Take a few breaths here. Try and be even on your sitting bones. Don't let your spine collapse. Keep your heart lifted. We'll stay in it two more breaths, but if you need to come out sooner, please come out sooner. And when you're ready, as you inhale, slowly unwind your spine. Pause there. Stretch your leg out, relax your legs, paddle your legs. We're gonna make our way to Shavasana, but I'd like to offer one more stretch on the mat before we get there. So, but when you're ready, come to lying down and have everything you want to have for Shavasana nearby. So you don't have to reach for it. If you know you wanna be covered with a blanket, reel that in. If you know you wanna be covered with your pet cat or dog, call them in. Just come to lying on your back. As I said, I'll offer you um, a stretch here in a moment, <clears throat> but I want you to gather what you need, get comfortable and notice just like you did in the beginning of class, how your back meets the mat. You can lie with your legs out straight or your knees bent. Notice how your back feels. Notice if there's any difference from right to left. Take any padding that you need under your head. You don't need to see me. I'll explain everything very clearly. I just wanna see where, where everyone is at the moment. Now, if you're ready, you're like, ah, I totally had enough. I want to come to Shavasana. Feel free to do that. If you'd like to do one more activity, which is a stretch, but also it falls into the forward bending category. Bend your knees, plant your feet, relax your arms. This will be familiar. Draw your right leg into your chest. You can take your right hand to the shin if you like or not and just draw it in snuggle it in condense pause and if it feels okay straighten your left leg out now when you straighten your left leg out if that throws you off if the low back curve really pulls away from the mat keep the left knee bent we're just going to be on this one side for a moment either with the left leg straight or bent the right leg curling in And then release the right leg down, let the foot touch the floor. If you stretch your left leg out, bring that leg in, both feet to the floor. Second side, draw your left leg into the chest. You could take your hand on your shin or you can bring it behind your thigh if that feels good. If your knee doesn't like to be folded this much, you can lift the lower leg a little bit. 
pause here. You want to be even on your right, the back of your hips. And then if it feels okay, stretch your right leg out straight. If that causes imbalance in the spine or any discomfort anywhere, keep the right knee bent. Stretch that leg out. So if you have one leg stretched out, it is working. We don't want it to be a hanging out leg. You pressing the thigh down. You're pulling your kneecaps in a sense up toward your hip. You're stretching your calf down to your ankle. So your leg is stretching in both directions while you're condensing the left hip. Now, if your right leg is straight, bend it. Pick that foot up so both feet are in. Take one hand to each knee and do really small circles. So we're really massaging the back. We're not tipping ourselves over to one side. So as if you were very slowly stirring a bowl of soup. Nice and slow. And then at some point, maybe after the next slow turn, circle in the other direction. Good. And then come back to center and pause. So you're in this nice little ball. You may wanna come and stretch out into Shavasana right away. You may wanna stretch your limbs out, one leg up at a time, or your arms out. You may wanna yawn. And when you're ready, come to stillness. Come to lying on your mat, get that blanket on top of you, get your little dog or kitty on top of you. Sometimes I have that when I practice and I know some people who have their pets with them. So get whatever you need to be comfortable. Close your eyes. Back where you started, on your mat. Notice how you feel. And then invite yourself to not even notice anything. Invite your body to be still and soft. Surrender the weight of your head and all its thoughts and all its wisdom down to the surface underneath your head. Soften your jaw and your teeth and let go of your unspoken words. Notice your shoulders. Is there anything you can let go there? Relax your right shoulder away from your right ear, and the left shoulder away from the left ear. Surrender the weight of your entire rib cage down. Allow your belly to be soft. Surrender your legs, your hard working legs. Your legs can be bent or straight. Invite the thighs that were thigh muscles that were hugging the bones to be soft on the right and the left. And invite your calf muscles that were hugging your lower leg bones to be very mushy. Soft like ice cream melting in the summer sun. Let go wherever you can and surrender to stillness. In a moment, you won't hear my voice for a few moments. So I just wanna give you some quiet. So take a few moments, a few minutes of quiet. Quiet in mind, quiet in the body. Surrender to stillness.
Give yourself another minute of quiet, another minute of calm, another minute of softness, another minute of silence. Keep your eyes closed and your body still, but bring your awareness back to your breath. And just take a moment to notice your breath as it rolls in and as it rolls out. Now, of course, you may not want to leave your Shavasana at all, it's a rainy New Year's Day morning. You may want to just stay in Shavasana. You do not have to get up. You could just stay there. If you do choose to come out of Shavasana, move slowly, one little movement at a time until your knees are bent and your feet are on the mat and you could ease your way over to your side, either side. Rest on your side for a few moments. Anytime you make a change, notice where you ended up. Take a breath, take a nice big sigh, do whatever feels right. And then if and only if you would like to come back to a seated position, come back to a comfortable seat. I'm just gonna be a little closer to the screen as we close, but you can stay lying down, that's fine too. Take any comfortable seat you like. You can rest with your hands on your thighs or you could draw your hands to your heart center. You can drop your chin down, surrender the weight of your head down. Lift your heart up. If your hands are together, lift your heart up to your hands. Connect your hands, your head and your heart. And in yoga, we created a lot of connections. We yoked in a sense our body to our spirit. Take a moment to notice the sounds around you, which may have faded into the background as you practiced, and also as you had my constant chattering coming at you. If you like, especially on this New Year's Day, offer this moment to gratitude. Thank your body for all it offers you. Thank your inner wisdom and your inner strength for all it offered you during a very unusual, obviously, year. Honor your heart for its goodness and treasure your spirit, yourself, your unique gift to the world and those around you. Namaste.